Every year, the Queen undertakes hundreds of duties as Head of State, Head of the Commonwealth, Supreme Governor of the Church of England, Head of the British Armed Forces, and Patron of around 600 charities. This exhibition reflects the remarkable variety of her role and allows visitors to see close up some of the country's historic ceremonial costumes and objects that are rarely on display. So why was the Queen's Year chosen as the theme for this year's special exhibition? Here's curator Catherine Jones. One of the reasons we th chose it was we thought that people are really interested in what the Queen does each year. And obviously in this country, people are aware of the spectacular ceremonies that she's involved in, like Trooping the Colour, State Opening of Parliament and Garter Day. But there are other private aspects to what she does, um, which are not it necessarily in the public eye and we wanted to show some of those as well to give an idea of the variety of her role and the sort of work she undertakes each day. So what should people know about the Queen's Year? The Queen carries out over 400 engagements each year. One of the nice things about doing this exhibition in Buckingham Palace is of course it's a working palace and many of the events like receptions and audiences and of course the garden parties take place here each year she has over 40,000 guests at the garden parties in Buckingham Palace and the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh. Since she became Queen, she's conferred over 400,000 honours, which I think is an astonishing fact. And a huge number of recipients are invited to the palace every year. In a way, it's an exhibition of what goes on in the palace as much as the Queen's working life. So what will people see in this exhibition? Well, there's a huge range of, of things, so a number of the Queen's dresses and, of course, her ceremonial robes, and associated with those robes, uniforms of people who work very closely in those ceremonies, so the heralds and the yeomen of the guard, for example. And then we have a number of her working items, so items from her desk that she uses during Privy Council meetings, and gifts she's been presented with during the reign, particularly in recently on state visits and during her regional visits. And then a few things that really reflect perhaps her personal interest in horses, so a number of trophies that she's won both at Royal Windsor Horse Show and at Royal Ascot. The Queen's love of horses is reflected in Trooping the Colour. She always used to ride her favourite mare, Burmese. And even now, even though she doesn't ride anymore, when she returns to the palace after the ceremony, she's driven in a carriage and she always feeds the horses herself before she um, goes up onto the balcony to receive the final salute. And of course, a lot of these exhibits are backed up with both photographs of the Queen, because she's photographed in every aspect of her life these days, and of course film footage, some of it early, dating back to early days of her reign, and some of it more recent. And we wanted to reflect that. And we have a montage of her Christmas broadcast, because of course she's made a, a broadcast every year of her reign, and since 1957 those have been on television. Last year, her Christmas broadcast was watched by 8.1 million people. Where will the exhibition be located in the palace? The exhibition's actually spread over two rooms. We have part of it in the ball supper room, and then when people go into the ballroom, they'll see both pieces related to investitures, which of course take place in the ballroom, and also an area reflecting the state opening of Parliament, which took place quite recently. So we hope that it will be in people's minds. You mentioned the many regional visits that the Queen makes every year and the gifts that she receives during those visits. Can you talk about a couple of the more unusual gifts that she's received? Yes, she's given a huge range of things, and often they reflect the place that she's visited in some aspect. Indeed, this year she was actually given a tube sign which says Buckingham Palace, and there's a wonderful photograph of her receiving it, and she looks absolutely delighted. What are some of your own personal highlights from the exhibition? The State Opening of Parliament is a spectacular event and we have some wonderful pieces. For example, we have the mace, which is carried in front of the Queen, and it's silver gilt, made in about 1660 for Charles II, and it's still used today. And usually two of those are carried in front of the Queen when she processes into the House of Lords. And also the cap of maintenance, which is this ancient symbol of, of royalty. And of course the Queen's robe, which is spectacular. It's over 18 feet long, the train made of velvet and lined with ermine and then with this amazing gold embroidery and it takes four pages to carry it normally and then we have perhaps more modern things like hats that the queen's worn to royal ascot and we've got a whole range of hats dating right back to the 1960s and then one from this year so it gives you a real idea of, of changing in fashion and and things that the queen's enjoyed wearing
We have some of her more personal things, like a dress that she wore to the Gillies Ball, which takes place in Balmoral each year. This is a, a dress designed by Norman Hartnell. I think one of the things people might be quite interested to see is the Maundy money. Each year, just before Easter, there's a special service held and the Queen presents this money to people who've done good service in their church or community. And uh, it's quite interesting to see these coins close to because they haven't really changed since Tudor times or even earlier. They are actually legal tender, and I think people might be surprised to realise that, but they represent one, two, three and four pence each. This year's summer exhibition casts light on several ceremonial bodies that play an eye-catching role in the Queen's year. These include the Yeomen of the Guard, with their scarlet doublets, the High Constables of Holyrood House, and the Royal Company of Archers. They also include the College of Arms, or Herald's College. This consists of members of the Royal Household, who are appointed by the Queen to be her Officers of Arms in Ordinary with special responsibility for armorial, genealogical and ceremonial matters. To find out what that means, I've come to meet Norfolk Herald of Arms extraordinary David Rankin Hunt. David, what is a herald? Collectively, the the heralds or officers of arms form part of the, the College of Arms, which was established way back in 1484. During that period, the, the heralds were responsible for proclaiming and organising, I suppose, the jousting tournaments, as well, of course, as assigning coats of arms to the leading families of the day. And I suppose it was this early experience of marshalling and introducing contestants at tournaments that led quite naturally to them taking responsibility for the organisation of state ceremonial. What's a typical day for a, a herald? It's mainly heraldic work, designing coats of arms and and undertaking genealogical research. How are heralds involved in the key events of the royal calendar, like the Garter Day and the state opening of Parliament? Well, certain specific heralds have a role. For instance, at the, the Garter Service, one of the heralds is Secretary of the Order of the Garter, so he's very much involved in, in organising the event. The remaining heralds, our role on the day is principally ceremonial. We lead the royal procession into uh, St George's Chapel. Now, your uniform will be on display as part of the summer exhibition. Could you describe it? Well, the well-known part of the uniform, of course, is the tabard. It's a representation of the the royal arms. It has four quarterings, which include two quarters of the Lions of England, a quarter showing the harp of Ireland, and the fourth quarter has the lion rampant of Scotland. We actually wear what is called a coatee under the um, tabard, which is a very thick and heavy scarlet uniform, rather similar to a guard's officer's tunic. It's covered in gold thread, and we also wear a black knee breeches, black stockings, buckle shoes, and just to finish it off, a court sword. It's quite difficult to put on, and whenever we go on duty, we always have somebody who helps us get into it because it's it's almost impossible to put on yourself. In very hot weather, it's most uncomfortable, but it's all part of the duty. What's it like to be a part of these ceremonial occasions? Well, it's enormous fun, and even though I've been doing it for 16 years, I still enjoy them very much. They're very grand occasions, The one occasion that I remember best of all was perhaps the Queen's Golden Jubilee Thanksgiving service at St Paul's. And I always remember processing down the aisle with the other heralds leading the royal family. I always remember the hairs on the back of my neck tingling. It was such a special event and you really felt that you were part of history. An enormous amount of work goes on behind the scenes to ensure that all the events in the Queen's calendar run smoothly. Whether it's planning a garden party or mounting the state opening of Parliament, every detail must be considered, every potential problem anticipated. Some of this organisation is done by the Master of the Household and his department. To find out more, I've come to Buckingham Palace to see Edward Griffiths, Deputy Master of the Household. 
Edward, what does the Master of the Households Department do? The Master of the Household Department looks after all of the entertaining that the Queen hosts. The department includes all of the kitchens, the housekeeping, the service staff and the reception staff, including also all of the portering and the back-of-house staff. What's your busiest time of year? Well, the present time is very busy during the summer. We've just done the garter ceremony, followed by a week of Ascot, and now we're into the garden party season, which takes us up until the end of July. Talk me through what goes on behind the scenes for a garden party. Well, a garden party holds generally between 7,500 to 8,000 guests, and we provide a tea during the afternoon, which is supplied in the tents. The palace has the help of a caterer for these events, but it doesn't alter the fact that we have a huge amount of planning, which starts many months in advance, in the provision of tea in the garden, where uh, we have to set up not only the tents, but temporary kitchens, and we look very closely as to the style of the menu and how appropriate that will be to the many people that will attend. So what do people get for tea at a garden party and how is it presented? The tea is presented on a buffet. The tea consists of a selection of sandwiches. There's a very good selection of small pastries, not forgetting a fruitcake. And there is, of course, a selection of tea, iced coffee and apple juice. What's the Queen's involvement in the garden parties? Well, her main involvement is obviously the greeting of guests and and the ceremonial side. The Queen approves the menus, and before the last garden party, the Queen always visits the garden to come and thank all the staff that are involved. This includes the first aid staff, the girl guides or scouts who are helping to guide the bands, and the staff involved in the tentage. To a lot of people, the jobs in the Master of the Household Department sound very unusual and exciting. Is that how the staff see their jobs? We certainly have jobs or things that we do that are very unique within the Royal Household. But I'd like to think that for many people, the the jobs that they do in so many ways compare to very many jobs elsewhere in business and industry. And I think what's really important from our point of view is that we try to achieve excellence in everything that we do. And it's very important for us, certainly from the image of what the Queen represents in the country, we are here to provide the most excellent support that we can for the Queen. The exhibition, The Queen's Year, is part of a visit to the summer opening of the State Rooms at Buckingham Palace from the 27th of July to the 1st of October 2010. You can buy tickets online, by phone and in person. Details are on the website.